Guys, what's up? This is Ken Susi here at Fishman. I'm doing a Fishman takeover. I am broadcasting live across Fishman's Twitch account, our Facebook account, and their YouTube account. I'm also uh, broadcasting on my personal uh, uh, YouTube page um, called Lord of the Rigs, and also I am broadcasting on my band on Earth's Facebook page. So every single Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going live. I'm here for you guys. You can ask me anything you want about my band. You could ask me about gear. Uh, you can ask me about touring. You can ask me about anything. But to be honest with you, obviously, uh, I'm super excited about Fishman Fluence humbuckers. I use these on all my guitars. This is the main reason why I'm here. Fishman was nice enough to let me go live every single week and rep these pickups. Um, in this guitar, this is my KSM7 string. I also have a six string uh, version of this, but they're both equipped with Fishman Fluence modern humbuckers. These are my, this is my modern set. I have the Alnico in the neck, the ceramic in the bridge. Uh, I play mostly in voice one, which is the active sound uh, for this particular set of pickups. And when I pull this up, I go into passive uh, mode. It's like installing a new set of pickups every single time I hit the switch. Uh, and right here is my uh, negative 6 dB reduction, gain reduction. So that's kind of cool if you want, uh, in voice one, if you're playing an active sound, you want a little less output, this is how you get there. But um, yeah, I'm here. I'm partying. Uh, guys, as always, I am here to answer your questions. I'm going to be throwing them up on the screen. Uh, Fishman Road, hey, everybody. Uh, uh, yes, best of the beast. Uh, Drew, real cool. Thank you so much. Uh, Ken Susio in the house. I just wanted to say a very heartfelt thank you, uh, Ken, for doing streams for us. Really means a lot that you're taking the time out of your day to spend time with us all uh, as fans as well as those of us that are musicians. I was wondering, could you learn, um, uh, what's it called? Can you learn Birth of Legion or Burial Lines from Watch as a Rule on the next stream? Uh, really love these two songs. Yes, I uh, the uh, I haven't played much on um, Watch as a Rule in some time. I, I would need to go in and uh, relearn some of those songs, but I can I can get something going. And uh, Drew, if you're still on, what do you think of? Um, I actually really like, and I wanted to learn this anyway. Jeez, uh, there's a song called. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I'll find it. I'll find it. Uh, like, there's a song on there that like I'm super hip on. I I, I wanted to relearn it, but uh, but yeah. Thank you so much, Drew. Really means a lot. Greg, what's going on? Bradley, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> the man, right here. The man with the song that I always request. Yeah, that was Zombie Autopilot that I just played off of. Uh, the oncoming storm. Uh, great song. Great album. Thank you. Uh, zombie, you guys were all excited. I appreciate it. Hello from Columbia. What's up? Um, Devil Horns, Metal Horns, whatever you want to call it. Here we go. Uh, great job. Mike is here again. How you doing, Mike? Um, any tours coming to Canada, preferably Vancouver? I would really like to come to Vancouver because I get to see that that wild man, Mr. Devin Townsend. He lives up in that area. But um, currently, right now, Unearth does not have a tour booked. The only shows that unearth has booked currently right now is we're playing furnace fest in uh uh birmingham alabama i believe it is uh furnace fest is a it was was a really amazing fest that used to happen in the uh early thousands and late uh yeah early thousands uh and every single band from that time period is getting back together and we're doing this huge festival it's three days uh i believe uh, us and kill switch are on the same day uh, i know that andrew wk is playing there too as well uh on our day uh, can of sushi. <laughs> yes. Um, just changed my pickups in my solar. Now it has Fishman Moderns. That's awesome. Um, Ola does offer, uh, moderns in some solar guitars, but, uh, yeah, I think you just upgraded that guitar significantly. So I'm really psyched for you. That's, that's really, really great. That's exactly what I have in my guitar. Moderns are the jam. If you like, uh, playing, um, active sounding pickups or, you know, uh, aggressive style, uh, uh, passive sounds. Um, Ken, I've been meaning to ask you, have you found much of a tonal difference between tube brands? If, uh, if so, just wondering if there's any tube setup you prefer in your amps. Thanks. Um, I can't, I can say that, uh, tubes, 
it really depends on what you're looking for. Obviously, Marshalls sound really great with uh, EL34s. And uh, the EVH uh, amp, the 5153, sounds really good. The EL34, I kind of prefer that over the 6L6 version. Um, if you're talking about specific tubes, I mean, I, I can tell, I can tell you that there are differences in in tube sounds. Um, I personally favor KT88s, and where you find KT88s, uh, I believe I have KT88s in this Rev. Uh, as well as uh, I have a VHT uh, old school power up the 2150 that has uh, KT88s in it and for some reason KT88s make your just I don't know it's just it has such a big blooming low end and a really nice top end to it so KT88s are pretty muscular sounding but you can't go wrong you know you can't go wrong with like amps that you know tubes that belong in specific amps like 5150 uh, PV sounds really good uh, with uh, 6L6s. Uh, Mesa Boogie sounds really good with 6L6s. Marshall sound good with e uh, EL34s. There's a reason why they put those specific tubes in those um, in those uh, in those amps. So I hope I answered your question. Um, should be getting my guitar from the shop soon. Got Fluence Moderns installed. That's awesome, Brandon. Um, Moderns are the jam. I mean, to be honest with you. Don't sleep on any of our signature series sets. Like the cool thing about our signature series is that like if you're really if you're a big fan of like Tosin Abasi or Killswitch Engage or or Will Adler, Devin Townsend, Keith Merrow, any of the pickups that we have, uh, Javier Reyes, that are signature, you know these guys for years have been touring with with pickups that have kind of done the thing for them. But they've always wanted like multiple sounds. Like if you listen to Killswitch Engage, they play heavy and they play clean. If you listen to Javier Reyes or Tosin, you know they play uh, you know thumping style, uh, cleans, aggressive, heavy stuff. Fluence has been the first pickup that actually you know facilitated all of their sounds. Um, and so if you're like really uh, you know trying to you know nail down a tone of a specific artist, you're you're most of the way there when you get their pickups. Um, so that's really cool about Fluence is that we're not like making something special for the artist and selling you something that's similar. You're getting exactly what they're playing. But me personally, uh, if I'm playing humbuckers, I'm really liking the moderns or classics. Uh, if I'm playing strat style pickups, you get to try the single width pickups. Those are really good. Uh, Telecaster Greg Cox signature telly set is really, really good. Uh, Greg goes live just so you all know on Mondays and Fridays. So uh, keep a lookout for that too as well. He's always showcasing all the classic sounds. He's such a phenomenal player. He was actually at Fishman yesterday doing some promo. Uh, can I possibly get Buzz soon? Yes. If you follow Buzz McGrath on his social platforms, you will see that Buzz McGrath has been maybe away for about two or one, one or two months just driving around in a van. He literally, I think he misses touring so much that he, uh, he jumped in a van I think he rented it for like 15, 20 bucks a day. He's just camping and fishing and and like literally traveling around the country, visiting all of our friends that we tour with, like uh, Frankie Three Guns from Hatebreed, uh, the guys from Camara. He was just with Mark Lewis, Emma Worsler, and uh, some of the guys from Between the Berry to Me. Uh, Dusty, I believe, was there. Uh, so he's just traveling around the country right now, just saying what's up to his friends, fishing, eating, hanging out. So Buzz McGrath, when he gets home. I would love to have him on the feed, but right now he's super busy being an outdoorsman. As he says on his uh, social platforms, he's on the road to nowhere right now, and uh, I think that's pretty cool. I've, I've, I wish I could live that kind of life. Uh, when am I gonna? When are we gonna see the new KS series colors? Uh, are you talking about my ESP signature guitar? Uh, I would love to do. I think you guys have all seen this, but I would love to do a, a guitar just like this uh it's the same exact guitar but with uh neon like day glow paint on it so fluorescent yellow would be cool fluorescent green would be cool um black would be cool i, I want to try different colors but right now this guitar i am in love with this this design and this color it's it's totally i don't know it's the first time i ever played a guitar that like i feel like really defines me uh as a player it feels comfortable in my hands it's everything i've ever wanted um what's up how you doing can i play watch it burn i will totally play watch it burn for you right now and um right here this question right here from uh i'm gonna answer these guys keep writing in your questions i'm gonna be just going right down the stream 
But as of right now, um, I think Matthew wants to hear uh, Watch It Burn, and I'm going to play it for you because I like that song. So let's play Watch It Burn. recording movie recording has stopped automatically we are not recording anything sorry i have to hit that button uh why is that oh it's because i don't have a car sd card in there it says sd card full of course of course it does guys i apologize uh anyway let's move on let's do this guys thank you so much that was watch it burn from uh da -da 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 -da. darkness in the light all right, let's answer this question. Hi, Ken. Could you talk about the differences between the classics, the Keith Marrow and the Javier Reyes sets in terms of output and voicing? 
let's do that right now. Um, I'm gonna head over to our website. Boom, fishman.com. Let's head over here. Uh, we're gonna talk about, you said Javier. Let's see real quick, Javier. Oh, the classics, Keith Merrow and Javier. Okay, let's start off with the classics. Uh, classics come in two different variations, two different styles. You got your open core classics right here, which are kind of cool. They're very, they have that open core look. And then you got the metal covered classics that are right down here. Uh, the voicing is uh, voice one on these things is a PAF, as you can see down at the bottom, voice one, PAF. Uh, you've got like, it's like your quintessential PAF. Like there's a lot of companies that say, um, you know, we make a PAF pickup, but like it's the pickup that is the PAF is the one from years ago, uh, back in the fifties, back in the sixties, when they, when they made like very underwound sound pickups. The problem with those is that you always wanted to add more turns on them because there was just, people always want a little more gain than what the original PAF has. Most of the PAFs that are out in the market now literally already have too much gain or they add too many windings and it really send, it really makes the pickup off balance. Um, so our pickups, obviously we dialed in that perfect PAF tone and then we, we raised the output and you get everything you ever wanted out of a true vintage PAF. Uh, voice two, clear, airy chime. Uh, I use this all the time for hard rock, heavy metal, blues, um, you get, uh, it's, it's, these, these are the, uh, neck tone, this is the neck tone. Um, and then you've got voice three, which is a clear present, sweet warmth, kind of single coily sound, but voice one, yes, PAF, as it says, calibrated vintage PAF bridge humbucker, humbucker tone with the perfect output level. So there you go. Classic hot rod. This is my jam. Love the cla love the classic voice two. quintessential hot rod, a bridge humbucker, uh, tone without any of the baggage and seriously like as i can say take any vintage hot rotted like muscular pickup and put voice two in uh a classic against it it's unbelievable even esp uh they use the classic humbuckers and uh they they make their voice to uh the down position the main the primary tone so again you get voice three right here but if you want to move back over so i would say that those are the tones they're very classic sounding uh, we can move on to, uh, you asked for Javier Reyes. Javier Reyes makes an amazing set of pickups. Uh, his pickups are really cool. Um, let me find them. Ah, here we go. Six, seven, and eight string Javier Reyes pickups. Now he tailored this to his specific sound. So it's un, it's not like the classics at all in any way, shape and form. Javier definitely did try out the classics. He thought that they were great, but they weren't exactly what he wanted for his tone. So uh, what did we do there? Neck pickup. Well, actually, let's start with the bridge pickup because I like talking about the bridge first. Voice one has a thick low end mid range growl plus aggressive upper mids. Uh, able to create a huge wall sound while still retaining note to note separation. I'm going to totally back that statement just because um, his pickups are super aggressive and they have such like a throat cutting, like, like growl to it. It's just amazing. Very aggressive sound. But again, they're like, you're talking about Javier Reyes from, uh, animals as leaders. There's, there's a lot of note, uh, separation and clarity he needs. So we've, we achieved all that in one pickup voice two, searing lead tone with treble harmonics. He, he, he hits the, you know, they do a lot of, uh, like, like soloing lead tone, stuff like that. So uh, that's, those are voice one and two, uh, voice three, clear, open, single coil tone. Obviously anyone who listens to the, uh, Javier animals, leaders, they really like that. Those single, those single, uh, with tones, um, all the time. So anyway, this is where the pickup gets tr like, like amazing. In my opinion, voice one in Javier's neck pickup is like a, a fat bubbly neck tone, round, smooth, top end, uh, potent individual notes. That's cool in itself. Cause people do like blooming, um, neck tones, but, um, voice two, it's a fluence exclusive neck tone, warmth and lively sounds, low mids talking on almost, at, uh, uh, sorry, taking a, on an almost hollow body jazz box, ca jazz box character. If you know what a jazz box sound, like a hollow body jazz box sound, this pickup totally turns into that. So if you're playing jazz, uh, no, voice two, definitely in the neck pickup. Unbelievable. So then again, it has uh, voice three capability. The last pickup you were inquiring about was Keith Marrow. Now, Keith Marrow is completely different, again, than all these other pickups. Uh, Keith Marrow set is like, it's medium output. 
And uh, what, what that means is that there's less gain for sure in it. So his bridge pickup, as it says right here, medium output, low mid, mid grunt with a passive feel. Uh, the sound Keith's head, it, it, the sound that's been in Keith's head, right? That and only fluence could deliver. Low uh, voice two is low output PAF roots from clean crunch to brown. So if you're looking for an Eddie Van Halen kind of sound, uh, voice two would do it in the bridge. Single coil, punchy single coil with a glossy top. That's voice three. Uh, Keith Marrow neck pickup, the ideal uh, vintage PAF. Actually, he has the same voicing as I believe the classics. Uh, so, uh, very, or very, very similar. But anyway, those right there are the three sets of pickups that you're inquiring about. Sorry, I have to head over it back here. So you just asked me to do an overview. So again, Keith Merrow, uh, output mid, mid, he has very like mid output kind of thing. Like it's like a, yeah, mid, <laughs> uh, Classics, uh, voice one is very low output. Voice two is very high output. And then Javier has a completely different thing going on. So guys, sorry about that. Uh, I just wanted to cover this uh, question in depth. Uh, I've heard good things about the KT88s, but it se seems like all my amps are 6L6 or EL34. I'll see if I can find uh, an amp to get a KT88s. And thanks. Yeah, KT88s are cool. It just depends what the amp calls for. But you know what? If I were to try an amp that had KT88s in it, I would try Rev or I'd try Rhodes. Rhodes, uh, the Gemini is a really great amp. Um, if Unearth comes to Southern California anytime soon, can my band open for you? I would love you to open for me. Um, I would. Uh, our booking agent usually handles that, so we usually roll around with a package. Sometimes we have uh, bands that are from the area open up, but Mike, we keep in touch. So just let me know if we're coming to your town. Uh, da, 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 da. How long have I been playing LTDs? I actually. I've been playing LTDs ever since I moved over to ESP. And ESP, I think I got my first ELP in, uh, ESP in 2014, I think it was, or 13. Uh, after I uh, parted ways with Ibanez, um, I started trying, like, they gave me a bunch of Horizon guitars that were ESPs, so I played those a lot. And then um, they gave me a signature prototype that was um, an ESP as well. But once my production model came out, uh, I AB'd this guitar against a lot of other guitars. Uh, Joel from Kill Switches, um, Comparison, uh, some Ibanez's, some ESPs. Uh, this LTD, pound for pound, it sounds amazing. Like, it sounds like a $3,000 guitar. So I'm happy with it. I'm not I'm not going to try to talk you into getting my guitar or telling you that my guitar is the greatest thing because any guy is going to tell you that who has their own signature guitar. But I'm telling you... For what I am doing, I absolutely love this, and I and I play this guitar everywhere. If like if you look at my live shows, I'm playing one guitar the whole set, and it's and it's always this. Uh, believe it or not, I I recorded the whole last uh, Unearth record um, on this guitar as well too, and that was uh, Extinction. So listen to the tone on that; it sounds amazing. Um, let's see. Being honest, I only tune in when I see your name. I really don't like the other two dudes that much. That is crazy. I really appreciate uh, your honesty, Christopher. But to be totally honest with you, um, thank you very much. It's awesome. Uh, Thomas McRocklin is one of my idols. Like as a kid, he he was taught by Steve Vai. Uh, he had um, he was a child prodigy. Uh, you need to watch Thomas McRocklin. He is an unbelievable player. Uh, pretty much one of the best shredders out there. Uh, I, I really appreciate that you like my feeds and you don't watch the others, but you really should watch the others. And I will say, Christopher, um, the other artist that po pops online is Greg Koch. And uh, I'm going to say that I can't speak any higher than of a guitar player than him. Like I feel like Greg Koch is the greatest uh, Telecaster player to ever exist, in my opinion. Um, I think you really need to take a double take. Watch Greg. He's a hilarious guy, great entertainer, but his playing is like, I mean, he's one of those guys, and I, and I love to say this. I honestly don't like to touch a guitar around him because he's so good. Like, I don't want to pick up a noodle of a guitar because I just, he's just that he's just so good that it's unbelievable so that's me being very sincere it's not because these guys are in the fishman ecosystem i'm telling you that greg cock thomas mcrocklin i i personally begged thomas to play fluence and when he tried them he loved them but uh thomas was like one of my favorite signings 
uh, the past couple of years, and Greg's been with Fluence Forever. So seriously, watch watch, watch those guys uh, and, and rip off everything they do. <laughs> um, yes, bring back the 80s uh, hair band neon colors. I know, I know. These, these guitars are super tempting. Um, so let's see... Yeah, Ken. Let's see. Guitar tone is huge. My guitar tone is huge. Why is my guitar tone huge? I'm using a Generator 100P by Rev. I know you can't see it very well. Uh, it's being hidden a little bit today. Uh, but uh, this amp is really good. I really, really like it. It has um, two notes technology built in. So I just plug direct. And what you're hearing is me just playing uh, direct sounds. Just rocking and playing. Let's see. Uh, oh, that's so weird. I don't know why that's happening. Oh, here we go. It's a really great amp. I played most of Warp Tour on uh, an amp just like this. So uh, check out the Generator 100P. Um, actually, if anybody uh, wants, I am actually uh, parting ways with my backup generator 100p. So DM me uh, if anybody's interested in getting picking up a rev amp off of me. I have an extra that I'm getting rid of. Um, let's see. How do you handle sustain loss from an Evertune? That's a great question. When I designed this guitar, I noticed that. When you take wood, like if you look at the back of the guitar, uh, there's a huge, huge, huge kind of route here for the spring system. But what I will say is that um, I definitely designed this guitar to retain as much wood as possible. So to keep the sustain and, and the guitar, like the sound of the guitar kind of intact, uh, I know for a fact what you're talking about. Sometime an Evertune will like take away the soul of an instrument and take away that like the really nice wood sound but um, that you get out of the guitar and whatever it's made out of. But I will say, I'm going to put your question back up here. Uh, if, if you could see the design of my guitar, I kept like specific things like right here. I didn't do any type of like weird, um, I forget what it's called, but an arch like to rest your arm in. I like, I kept wood in as many places as I possibly could. And the guitar is super thick. It's like a real real heavy guitar so i did my best to design this guitar to not be affected by the evertune go ken uh let's see how's the new record coming along it's coming along well buzz has like eight songs i have a million riffs i haven't really put them together yet so i'm the guy who does his homework last but gets an a <laughs> i'm just kidding um let's see Ah, when writing, do you ever hit a wall because you're trying to write? Uh, tr you're trying to write sounds too much like something you've written before. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Unearth like we have our own specific sound, and when you listen to Unearth, you'll hear that we sound like ourselves, which is cool. But uh, on the other hand, it's tough because other bands, you know, throughout the years have kind of bitten our sound and style, and uh, it makes things tough. It definitely, uh, you know, you have to think of something fresh and new and you also have to sound like yourself and sometimes you take little musical journeys and go somewhere else my whole thing is is it's not necessarily about hitting a wall with writing because everybody hits a wall it's more about if you take away and this is just my perspective on writing if you take away the passion behind it if you sit down and you say i'm going to write the greatest song on the planet and this is the one that's going to move the earth I feel like you're going to write the worst song you've ever written because you're putting too much pressure on yourself. I think it's very important to keep a, like, if you have a good day, say you get a raise at work or you meet a girl or a guy that you like and, and they say that they want to go out with you or whatever it is, bottle up that emotion, take that emotion, or if you even like, oh, best example, if you ever, if you play a show and the crowd vibes into what you're doing, like take that emotion right back to the studio and just start writing Again, because sometimes when you're in good spirits, even if the song comes out good or bad or whatever it is, you're bound to hit something. And if you are in a rut, step away from the song and move on to something else and come back at, like with a fresh perspective. And maybe like two months down the line, you'll listen to that song and say, ah, oh, that was so stupid. Like, I can't believe I tried to do that. I should do this. Just produce yourself. Produce your own music. Uh, I, I think that's very important. 
Got the open core classics in my PRS. That is a great move. Uh, absolutely love open core pickups. Uh, voice two is my jam. I, I can't, if you're playing like heavier or aggressive stuff or blues or, or rock, uh, I think those are awesome. But if you're playing like, if you're looking for a PAF tone, keep it in voice one, baby. Um, hi, Ken, the guitar wizard. <laughs> the guitar wizard. You're calling me the guitar wizard. Thank you. Uh, what are you, uh, what's your stand, standard amp uh, mid bass treble settings? Uh, good question. It varies on different amps, but what I try to do the most is that I try to take all my amps, set them to 12 o'clock right when I get them. And then I start EQing from there. So 90% of the time, I find myself lifting the bass to about eight, seven, eight, somewhere in that range. Like when I say seven or eight, let's just use uh, the clock. So I'll lift it to three o'clock or one o'clock on the bass, just kind of feeling out how much low end a specific amp has on it. Then I take the mids and then I'm like kind of fishing around to see if the if the mid range sounds a little bit too much mids. It's, it's, it just depends. Like if it's a global mid and it's like round, I, I tend to cut it out. I might go to like nine, nine o'clock, almost 10 o'clock, but then some amps are actually are pretty good and I might keep it up at 11. So it depends on the amps, like a Marshall, I'll keep my mid range. I'll actually put my mid range maybe on like noon um, or, or, or 11 o'clock, but on a 5150, I may have my uh, uh, settings on say, I don't know, 10. Uh, it just depends on, it really depends on the amp. But then feel out the presence, feel out the residence, feel out the treble, same way. Just kind of balance it, like really listen to what you're doing. So that's that's how I approach uh, doing that. So if I were going to give you a 5150 settings, I would say my bass is on six, uh, sorry, one o'clock. I would say that my, or actually, no, my bass is on like, uh, two o'clock. I would say my mids are on uh, ten. I'd say my trebles on two. I, two o'clock. I would say, I'm um, looking at my amp right now. My residence is on like uh, eight o'clock, and I would say my my presence is on like seven. Uh, so that's cool. If you're playing a Marshall, I would say my bass is all the way up, or at or at like three o'clock. I would say my my mids are at like eleven or twelve and my trebles uh, at noon or one. Um, presence is always at around like noon or one as well. So there's different amps. You know, I can't give you, I can't give you a set, uh, like a set thing. Okay. Uh, let's see, great sounding pickups. Thank you so much. Ooh, look at this. I love these bots. Want to become famous? Buy followers, primes and viewers on bigflows.com. Guys, I am sending out a shout out to Big Flows, Big Follows, sorry, I thought it was Flows, BigFollows.com. Um, real good scams. <laughs> People are working out the angles. I like it. Bots. Um, hey, Ken, uh, did you could discontinue the Stefan Carpenter pickups? No. Stefan Carpenter pickups. Let's talk those. They are right here on our website. These are amazing. I know it looks like there's a green line in, in there. Um, but it's not. These are actually glow in the dark. So uh, we just show that in the in the photo. Um, these actually look kind of like white in the light, but the second the lights go off, this line lights up. But we have seven and eight string. What you may be thinking of is that we um, didn't discontinue Steph's pickups, but we did a limited edition run with Stephen Carpenter at the very beginning when he put out his pickups uh, of six string pickups. Uh, and then, um, just because we wanted to keep them special, uh, we did a run of like a hundred of them and then that was it. We just ran out and, uh, and we left it that way for a little while just to keep them special. That's Fishman's first like collector's item. So if you could find a set of Stefan Carpenter, um, six string pickups, literally I could say that like there's only a hundred made and they come with like a, a special card that like gives you the number, like which one in production. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, what pickups are similar to those pickups? Um, Steph's pickups definitely sound like his pickups, but uh, it, they sound, they're the closest to the modern set. And if you were a little bit upset because uh, you couldn't find Steph Carpenter pickups in six, I would say that you should buy a set of moderns 
The only thing missing from that is a little bit of like mid range. Uh, Steph added more mid range and pick attack in his pickups. Uh, but other than that, it's almost the same. Um, hey, Ken, has Fishman ever discussed a sustainer pickup? If not, I'm putting in my vote. Uh, they are very cool, but there are a few choices out there and they are hard to find without buying them pre-installed in the guitar. Yeah, um, we've discussed it. It's just that like we have, you know, there's been about 80 years of, of different styles of pickups and technology that's been out for, for uh, pickups. So we're a fairly new guitar pickup company, uh, electric guitar pickup company. Acoustic, obviously. Larry basically invented the uh, acoustic guitar pickup, but or uh, we're actually the most sold. Like we've, we've sorry, we've actually, uh, you know, the, the industry leaders in acoustic pickups. But um, yeah, uh, for Fluence, we're fairly new. So we got to catch up on all the other skews that we're missing uh there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline as far as the future goes uh we still have to tackle more bass pickups and more uh variations of guitar pickups and we definitely have more like signature artists and custom artists coming on board so it's a really exciting time for fluence and it's because of all you guys uh that have just been so cool this whole time just you know really pushing our stuff buying our stuff it's it's been awesome and and you know artists are taking notice uh, and, and our fan base is wild. It's awesome. Um, what's the next shape on my LTD? I asked them for, a, I believe it's called a thin U. Uh, and I asked them to, um, actually decrease the amount of, I think there's like poly on here is like a, is like some type of a finish. So they actually did a really good job of making this like almost, you know, usually I sand down my neck and use tongue oil. Uh, but this is like a really, really thin finish on here. So it's a, it's a, it's a thin U. Uh, it's not a C neck, so it, it's not like this. It's more of a, of a D neck. Uh, it's like a, it's kind of shaped like a D. So you know, your thumb can roll down, and it's flat on the back, but it's, it's, it's curved on the upper and lower end. Absolutely love this neck. Loved your older ESP model. I have one hanging right over there. I love it too. It's a great guitar. Uh, if you miss that model, you should check out uh, Head from Corn. He has a model that's very similar to mine. It's a quilted maple top, uh, Evertune Bridge, Fluence pickups. Uh, you can't go wrong. He, his is in purple. Mine was kind of a brownish, uh, brownish guitar, if you want to call it like wood. Um, any word on when Unearth will be back on the road touring? Uh, I answered this earlier, um, but uh, thank you, Carrie. Uh, but uh, we're we're going um to Furnace Fest, Alabama, um on Birmingham, Alabama on what I say, uh September. And then we'll probably hit uh Australia, Japan after that. We're gonna ease our way back into touring. Uh we have a record to write. We wanna give you guys more music before you just go back out on tour. Uh Extinction is freaking brutal. Album, do you enjoy the record process or is it something uh you kind of well you said dead, but I'm sure you meant dread. Um I love recording. I love being in the studio. I actually love recording myself. Uh, I have a nice studio here. Uh, our last record we produced with Will Putney. I was able to just uh, track my at my songs on in my studio and send him the guitar tracks. Uh, obviously, we we do some uh, pre pro and we meet up and we talk about stuff stylistically. Uh, it is a band effort, but Buzz usually tracks with a producer. I usually track by myself just because I, I'm 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 you know studio savvy. Uh, I do love making records. I do love having nothing and then making it making something out of it and then touring on it um i may like the recording process a little bit more than live but i also do love playing live um but that's that yeah how can you not love greg i know i have i absolutely agree greg cock is an unbelievable artist i'm just saying that but well but i'll say this too it's cool that fishman shares uh where we have a very eclectic collection of guitar players that uh you can pick from thomas mclaughlin is a super shredder greg cock telecaster classic shredder guy you got you know heavy metal guy me you get like tosin abasi javier reyes you got so many good players devin townsend uh all the guys that you see on our live feeds uh they're great and girls uh, we have Angela doing, um, she's teaching you songs on Saturday. Every Saturday she comes up and she, she does like a, you know, let me break down this song for you. And she's so, you, you guys should check out Angela just because she's like so thorough with what, you know, she does. And she's really passionate about like playing guitar and teaching guitar. 
So you should check out her live streams. I, I We have such a great ro- artist roster. I can tell you that... The only thing I can say is that every single person on, on the Fluence artist roster is such a cool person. Like Sarah Longfield, Sarah Joanne Draper. You know, the range is huge. Uh, you know... Um, uh, Rupam Garg, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm naming all these people just because they come to mind, but everyone's really, really, really cool. Uh, so anyway, Rev is fantastic. Thank you very much. I, I agree. Rev sounds absolutely awesome. Uh, Thomas McRocklin, there we go. And his magic pink guitar. And not only that, because he's got so much great stuff. I love watching that show. Yeah. Thomas McRocklin Shred Club every Monday, every Friday. Absolutely amazing. He we he did. He has this new pink guitar, and we gave him um, purple pickups that look amazing on that guitar. So uh, he plays purple classic pickups. Um, so Thomas is a super shredder. Don't sleep on Thomas. Um, what's the Matt Heafy set going to be like? I got to choose between Modern's KSE and potentially uh, his for my solar later on. Well... Matt Heafy is a huge fan of the modern humbucker. Killswitch Engage is a huge fan of modern humbuckers. Uh, it depends. If you want a yellow, a, a gold stripe down your moderns, uh, Heafy, his pickups are going to be a custom series, not signature. Uh, but it's good because he wants, he loves the modern so much. He's he's playing moderns and he wanted a cosmetic difference. Uh, Killswitch uh, changed the uh, sound of the modern humbucker a little bit for Voice One. They shelved off a little bit of the low end for more articulation. Uh, and their voice two is a passive pickup that is something that's not currently in our line. Um, so you can't go wrong with a modern or a Hefe or a KSE. They're all really good. So Hefe's going to have modern pickups. Uh, it's just custom series and there's a, a design change. Um, hey, Ken, I have a guitar that came with open core pickups. If I wanted to swap them out uh, for some other Fishman pickup, would it be pretty much a plug and play or do you have to swap the wiring? Uh, that's the coolest thing about Fluence right there. So in most cases, you would have to buy a set of pickups and then rewire them and take them out of the guitar. Fluence is all point to point. We ask you to solder all your switches and your knobs and your, and your you know, all the stuff in your guitar. You, you're soldering them in there. But the coolest part is that uh, when you decide to swap pickups, you can take out one set of Fluence and put in another set of fluence and there's a quick connect in the back so if you look at the install guides online you'll see uh, exactly where the pins go and where you slide on the uh the the quick connect um so feel free to just you know mix and match classics moderns make any set that you want out of any, any sound that we have do you have a recorded uh sorry have you recorded a uh d y n i r pack for two notes uh, is it harder than to record a regular IR pack? Um, the two notes process was really difficult. Um, they asked me to like take a, uh, you know, they asked me to take a, a, an amp and move it around and move microphones around and all that other stuff. So that was, that's a pretty intense, uh, uh, product to make, uh, with them. So check out my signature series, uh, my signature IR pack, uh, at two notes. I think it's really cool. Uh, the Great Dividers. Why not? Let's play a song. It's been a minute. Uh, guys, we're almost done with this feed. I can't even believe that you, you've been entertaining me this whole time. Let's play The Great Dividers off the oncoming storm.
guys, Great Dividers off the oncoming storm. I only have a few minutes left. I'm going to run down these questions real quick for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, can I do, can we end the stream with incinerate? Unfortunately, I don't have my drop pedal. Uh, I will do that next week, I promise. Let's see. Let's just go through these questions. I really want to air. I really want those eight string versions. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, do you send in stems or tracks or without your amps or both? Oh, I um, I basically, uh, if they record drums or to a click track or whatever it is, I take those drum tracks. Uh, he'll just make a stereo version of them, uh, whoever the pro producer is. And then I just make, um, I send him the stems, uh, all the guitar tracks. Uh, if I quad guitar tracks, I'll send him four guitar tracks. If I, you know, send him six, whatever it is. Um, I give the producer all the ability to do whatever he can in order to mix the record. I will not uh, bus or or blend amps or anything like that. Uh, I'll send DIs and whatever microphone and amp I've used. Oh, Cassandra, how you doing? Haven't seen you in a while. Hope uh, Toronto is treating you right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Thanks for answering all my questions. Time to go nuts trying out oh, new fishman combinations. I agree. I agree. I do that all the time in my studio. Um, hey, Ken, I am friends with Joe Stump, ESP artist. Joe's awesome. Uh, not sure if you ever met, but uh, sorry, not sure if you ever met, but he seems to dig your stuff. I'm trying to get him into fishman single coils. Uh, what would you re recommend for a mom stream style tone? Uh, the fishman uh, single width pickups. I would uh, direct him to the site and show him these wonderful pickups for Strat. Uh, Ingve should be playing these. He's currently not. But if anybody knows Ingve out there, you tell him that uh, he should be playing these pickups. Um, I do have a rechargeable. In, in, uh, I modified this. I bought uh, a, a Fishman battery and threw it into where my 9 volt is. I just routed a little bit of the edges out um, and I put a battery pack in there. Unbelievable. Way, way better than a 9 volt. I'll tell you that. Uh, I think it's a necessity. Thank you. Let's see. Thank you, Ken. I try not to miss your takeover. Really fun. Yes, with that being said, I do have to leave. Uh, but I will say, every single Wednesday, 3 o'clock p.m., I'm here partying with you guys, and I will not let you down. I will always be here. Uh, I love doing these live feeds. I love doing. Um, I love playing for you. I love answering your questions. This is why I'm here. Fishman's the best company in the world. Don't forget, if you're looking for anything Fishman, www.fishman.com. Uh, head over there. You'll see our acoustic product lines, our MIDI, our amplification, the new electric guitar pickups, anything that you want to know about Fishman is right here on our site. Uh, again, I am uh, going live on my personal YouTube page. Please feel free to follow it. It's called Lord of the Rigs. Uh, we are broadcasting on the Unearthed Facebook. They were really cool uh, to let me uh, also share this. And let's not forget, Fishman. Go head over to the YouTube pay, uh, Fishman YouTube page. Like and subscribe. Set your notifications. We are also broadcasting on Facebook and Twitch. Guys, my name's Ken Susi. We're trying to really uh, up our uh, up our um, view count and just hit like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We really, really uh, appreciate if you guys just like do whatever it is in order to uh, follow our channel. So we'll be back next week. Love you all. Have a great holiday. See you guys after Monday. We'll be doing this again on Wednesday uh, at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye, guys.